right, everyone, we're back now for part two of the summer of 69. Some of the 69 Camaros that we have in the show that are built at Detroit Speed. So I have Kyle here. So we'll flip the camera around here and now we're gonna talk about the cars that we built that are in the show. And number one, right off the bat, I mean, it's kind of a doozy, that's Twister. So this is the, the first one. So yeah, why don't you tell is, us a little bit about it? This one's even like uh, pre-D, right? So pre-Detroit Speed. This one started when I, I had a job, finally, instead of being a college co-op at GM. Um, you know, and I, I really looked up to um, like the, the Big Red Camaro and the Penske Donahue Camaros. That's why I liked Camaros, was, was because of what that era car and, and especially the Trans Am series did. So um, I grew up racing, loved racing. My dad was a, a hot rodder, had all kinds of cars. So this car really came about, the vision was, you know, it had to, to pack the, the functionality part of homage to the to the Trans Am cars, but also make it a really detailed build, something that we could drive, um, go to the track days, autocross, and, and it was really what Mark was doing. I mean, Mark and I were buddies and went to high, went to college together, both from Missouri, so we, we did a lot of things and followed each other and kicked a lot of ideas around, mm -hmm. and this was really the start of a lot of the parts that, that had a vision about, that Mark and I talked about, but built in a two-car garage, you know, I had a TIG welder and a, and a bridge port, and if you couldn't find the parts that we wanted to build this car, it just made it. Right. And, and to this day, it's pretty cool because the mini tubs that we make are just like we did the, the prototype tubs in this car. The subframe connectors are exactly like what we sell today, the offset shackles, so a lot of things kind of started on the twister. And you know, it came out in a time when people were building some Camaros that kind of had the look, but other than Mark and, and, and putting the cars together to go drive and do track days, this was the one that I wanted to do to, to do that, but also have a really high-end detailed finish. And right. it took a long time in that two-car garage, man, but uh, learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes, and, and uh, came out the summer of 2000. Mm -hmm. And just, a, I think, the right time for the car where people kind of related to it. Um, came out, uh, we did the full power tour with it that summer, so San Bernardino all the way to Panama City, Florida on a car that had like 40 miles on it. So I was sick <laughs> right. in my stomach every morning just thinking that it, if it would start or not. <laughs> but it made it all the way over. I think we melted a relay once and that was about the only issue with it. Um, but, uh, you know, again, it has vintage air, has all the creature comforts you would have today and want today, but the car handles awesome. It, it just was the right time for the car right. and um, started the company without really knowing it because it came out in some magazines after being on Power Tour and um, went to SEMA that year and, and just won Street Machine of the Year at Columbus. Yep. So Columbus mm -hmm. is always a special place to me because it, it really started kind of putting uh, the type of car and, and us on the map at the time. And, right. um, anyway, people started calling to, to work on a car to kind of do a part or two like we had on Twister on their cars and pretty soon a business was born and that's where Detroit Speed kind of yeah. came from was this car. So this car, it's a is it a it's a stock subframe car but you made the the control arms it is it's actually uh this is a little bit of 2.0 because uh our friend eddie vanoy owns it and has owned it ever since i sold it to him in in 2000 so it has our hydroform subframe in it now but back to the day it was a stock subframe i had made and designed the uh uprights modified a pontiac mm. catalina spindle um, made the upper control arms, modified the lower control arms, and um, it kind of looks like it used to because we had yeah, the, the dove gray, gray. Yeah, yep. the dove gray suspension parts, kind of like the old Trans Am cars had. Um, so that was really the start of you know putting some parts on a stock subframe that lead to what we still sell today, that mm -hmm. same geometry. So is this the same power plant that you had when you originally built it? It is, yeah. It's, so it's a bow tie block. It's a 406. Um, bow tie block and what's kind of cool is Stilo and I talked a lot about this engine build and Stilo is definitely more of an engine and powertrain guy than I was my specialty so we spec'd a lot of parts out the the uh, intake is really neat and the fact that it's a tunnel ram intake that we machined and welded in fuel injector bungs in right to make it a multi-port and if you recognize the plenum uh, instead of having a dual base uh, dual quad setup it's uh, it's uh, basically the dual quad setup into an L98 plenum that we fabbed and put together and, and uh, it, it just kind of looks right with a right. Lingen filter throttle body, Excel throttle body on it. So it, it's the same power plant, um, same six speed transmission. Back in the day, we used to use the Dodge Viper transmissions. And okay, really, that's cool. So it's the, the Dodge Viper six speed in it. And um, of course the bear brakes. So a lot of it is still the same as what it was back in the late nineties when mm -hmm. we were building it. Yeah, and I know it came back to the shop I guess it was 2013 
right. or so for an update for and i know you yeah update. changed the wheels and that, i guess that's when he got the subframe is it still a, a leaf spring car it is still a leaf okay. spring car same leaf spring same offset shackles that i whittled out on the bridge port that we make today mm -hmm. uh, the they are a little nicer but uh, <laughs> it's still still cool so you know before you could really buy the aftermarket recaros these are from the uh the 79 Trans Am pace car in the Mustang and took the, if you remember the head, the fishnet uh, headrest took oh, those yeah, off right. and recovered, still in the black and white hound's tooth and I handmade the dash um, and the dash pad so we could put in like a fourth gen Camaro uh, trim panel on the, on the dash and uh, made the console out of a flat hood that came on this car originally. So, <laughs> really? Yeah. I, That's I, cool. I, I carried that flat hood around the swap meets trying to sell it for 20 bucks. I don't know how many swap meets and I couldn't sell it so finally I said you know I should do something with it and I needed a console and that's the hood flat hood off the car that I just uh, kind of shaped down and trimmed down and needed a place for a fuel gauge right. that's where it ended up. So that's why you don't get rid of parts nowadays. I still love keeping parts. <laughs> I am a parts hour reporter. Uh, so again I kind of like the, the the base versions of the Camaros so that's why it has the black bow tie on it. Um, Eddie's changed a few things on the tail lights but it's still just pretty much like it was you know you can see the mini tubs um, still look stock when you yeah you know, paint the trunk it, it looks stock in fact I had before mini tubs were prevalent at all um, one of the very first shows we took this car to was in Detroit at the Autorama and not that it was a show car but we thought hey the car is fresh and we took it there and the judge argued with me that the car was a mini tub because he couldn't tell that it was mini right so I thought that was pretty neat <laughs> that is cool and this battery mount is that that is part number one. That's actually. part number one, the first one. That's our very first part number uh, we ever had at Detroit Speed was actually a, a battery mount for the Optima batteries. We've had a long relationship with Optima, mm -hmm. and, and that was one that I made again on that bridge board and cranked it out because you couldn't buy one then, and right. um, it's stuck. We still sell them today. So and that, that's not a CNC bridge port. That's no, that's uh, CNC you're, like yeah. this. You got to move both hands. <laughs> so yeah. Handmade, yeah. essentially handmade. It is. And that's, you know, like you said, that's a part we still sell that today. It is, you know, a lot of these parts, um, not only the parts that we make, but the, the companies we partner with, like American Auto Wire, that has an American Auto Wire harness on it, um, to I Did It Column, to Vintage Air. So a lot of these companies, classic instruments, all that, that we still use today. Right. Uh, we use back in the late 90s. That's awesome. So it's still a special car. Definitely is. Cool. This I guess car we got this one here too. Is Detroit Speed? In fact, a pretty recent build. We had the car at SEMA last year in the Holly booth. Um, Mark Welburn owns it now, out of Alabama, and still a fresh car. You know, it hasn't been out a lot, and uh, was invited to come up here, which was really cool for us and for Mark. But it's a car that looks very, very simple, like this most of our style. Um, but it has a lot of really cool parts on it, not only from the bumpers. Um, but a lot of 3D design design parts that we did and then 3D printed um, and we actually used the parts body worked and put in from the hood extractors to the fender heat extractors yep, even and to the louvers and the too. quarters yep. that's, that's all um, you know custom designed and 3D printed parts we even designed the, the door handle uh, it's a billet aluminum door handle just a nice simple touch to it and uh, works well but very simple car uh, that looks simple, but a lot of body modifications to it, and it's right. a paint job that's uh, that's an eye catcher. You're either gonna love it or hate it, but I think it fits the car well. Right. Oh, we got an autograph session here. Oh yeah, <laughs> he got you a poster. Go ahead and, and do his little autograph session. I'll talk about this car a little more for a second. So um, we actually just had this car featured in uh, Super Chevy. Uh, they were so gracious, they actually made the cover. So the interior was M&M hot rod interiors. Um, they actually started out as just Kirky seats that uh, they've reupholstered because he kind of wanted that racy vibe. And um, I mean, they just, they look right. It just, everything looks right with this car. So Kyle's back, signing some autographs. Some of the things that, you know, were cool, again, from roll bar to the seats to the, the A-pillar, um, you know what the guys did on the A-pillar and the flush mount glass. That's mm -hmm. something that, again, that looks easy when it's finished, but hard to do down into the cowl area. You know, it's a custom cowl. If you know what a cowl, looks, cowl panel looks like on a 69 Camaro, it has actually the reverse shape of this, and it has the vents in it um, for the water to drain. So we deleted the, or the wiper blades on this car. It's a fair weather car with being a convertible, mm -hmm. and hand made the hood skin um, and carried that, that, that hood line down in even the front balance. So right. um, even made the, the front lower balance. And uh, like I said, there are guys in the shop from the fabrication team to the body shop to everything it's just we've got a great 
team of guys and, and some of the details that you just, they look like they're either not there or you, you don't notice until somebody points out that the guys come up with is you right. know, turn signals in the grill. Yep. So they're even, they're tucked away in there yeah. and it smokes so it blends in. It does. So very functional, very simple, but um, works well. The underneath of the hood is very clean, simple. Um, Easy to drive, has all our common parts on it from our subframe into our subframe connectors and quadrilink. Um, mm -hmm. But the engine's straightforward, but a, a great power plant and, and runs really good too. Yeah, and I believe it's just a heads cam LS7, nothing exactly. too wild. Yep. And this is actually, I remember Blake, he talks about it a lot because it was new technology for us, something we started using a lot of the Cerakote right. on the bolts, and he took that, that Cerakote finish and put it onto the subframe as well, so it's painted to look like the Cerakote, so. Just a clean, simple touch to it. You know, again, this car is the Bosch Motorsports ABS brake package on it, so just a modern day driving car and easy, very easy to drive, the mark can enjoy for years. Yeah, I, I love the simplicity of it. That's it, it's just, uh, you, you kind of have to like that. You, this car, the more you walk around it, the more you can appreciate it. You know, even the bottom side of the hood skin. Yep. Um, again, you look at it and it looks, wow, it's just neat. You don't know quite what's been done, but to think about Blake built a, you know, a buck to hammer form the, the top of the hood and then really only use the stock's perimeter of a stock hood for the structure and then mm -hmm. he made the under skin too. Yeah, and I remember, I mean, he worked on that hood skin and he worked on that for weeks. It was, big it, was, it was a long project, a lot of time on the English wheel and hammering it on that buck, so right. he had yeah. plenty of time on it. Forge line wheels, again, kind of out there um, with the BFG Rival S tires, and we put the white letters on them, and, and the orange bear calipers. Just it's kind of popping here and there, and a little more of a statement than we usually make. Um, but it's something that the customer wanted, and I think it all just came together, and we stuck with that vision. That's important, you know, as you start building a car, you can't have, even if you uh, may or may not like something that, right. that you need to do with the vision, you have to stick with the vision and all the way through, and then it, it comes together. Yeah. And I think that's what happened here. Mm -hmm. And a big question a lot of people get, you know, we get all the time, these are Buick uh, mirrors, and then Blake went ahead and recess them in there rather than having that that gasket the little black ring that goes around it it would just stand right. out so we recess that in there so it just has a nice even gap all around it yeah, and i mean the, we've used these mirrors too uh, i forget what else we used them on we've used them on several camaros and, and the reason we like them is you know the the angular lines the shape it fits a 69 camaro more than the 69 camaro right uh, mirror i think because the lines just line up a lot better a lot of straight um, angular lines on a yeah. 69. Yeah, I mean you have this, this that hard body line on the fender that goes pretty much all the way back to the quarter. Right. No, and it works. You know the tonneau cover uh, the guys did, and it was a, actually a hammer formed aluminum buck underneath that that we leather covered. Um, so just a neat theme all the way through. Something a little different for us, but. Um, Proud to call it ours, and like I said, it's got a great home and a great owner now too. Yeah, and he'll so he'll drive it, he so will. that's perfect. So a fun build and pretty recent. Last year at SEMA was its uh, debut. So I guess we'll uh, we'll move over to the big one here. Yeah, you know this is this one still makes us all tired in the shop when we look at it and talk <laughs> about it. But uh, to me, it's something really really special, and we had a, a big year with it last year. Um, to win Street Machine of the Year again here at Columbus. It's so hard to do that with all the cars that come out for Street Machine. Um, to go to uh, Shades of the Past and, and win a Triple Crown there mm -hmm. and then take it to SEMA and win the Battle of the Builders. I mean, we, we, we couldn't have imagined that kind of success. But it's, right, it's and of course even of the debut too, the, the grade eight at Autorama. Exactly. So it's just, we took it to, I mean, pretty much every show we took Tux to last year, I mean, it it came away with something and you know we're uh we were just ecstatic that whole entire year that you know all of the hard work that everyone put into this car the the long hours and the many years of changing things and just modifying parts it was able to you know collect all of those awards and I know Stuart was excited about it, and he's a great customer, and you guys have a, a long-lasting friendship. We do, you know, it started, this car started many, many years ago, the idea of it, because we built, uh, this is the fourth car that we built for Stuart, and um, the other three were, the first one was a crazy engine in a Camaro. Mm -hmm. um, that was the, the Illuminator? Illuminator, yeah. Yep. So we built that back in the small shop in Detroit. Uh, uh, it was an Ares 540 aluminum big block with a um, Pro Charger on it, just a scary car to drive. I remember <laughs> the first time I drove it at night, um, we got it done and they just wanted to go drive it and just a scary car so um, Stuart moved on from that to a, a, a red 68 Camaro 
um, that we did, again, with a, a nice mild big block in it, and then that went to a 69 Camaro that we built for him, and then we finished that the, the third 69 Camaro uh, for him, the third Camaro build. This car came about, I'll never forget, it was a late night at the shop, I finally pulled home, Stuart and I would talk up late at night because he's a few hours behind us being where he lives at, and he said, hey, I want to build another Camaro. And we had just finished the last car for him, and I said, well, what do you want to do? He said, well, I want to build a Camaro like you've always wanted to build a Camaro. And he said, and I want it to be black. And it's not an open budget car, but I want you to really think about how you'd build a car, Camaro, that's different. Well, right. how do you build a 69 Camaro that's different than what we've done and, and always what I wanted to do? So it, it took a long time to kind of pencil what we wanted to do and talk about it, found the car and started. And there's nine man years in this car, so it, it took a long time. But again, you, you pick a vision and you stick with it. And the vision was it was black, it was sophisticated, it was elegant, and and we and it had to have the performance that Detroit speed cars have. Mm -hmm. And we put it all together. And and you know it would probably take us a day to talk about some of the body modifications in this right, car on a video. Right. But just some of the things that that look stock that are not um, from the the drip rail. Every Camaro right has a drip rail on it. And this car had the trim, but instead of having one piece, a corner piece, and then another piece, it's all one piece and that we made, all one piece. We actually shaved the drip rail, welded the seam, and then made a fixture so that we could have send this to our friends at Advanced Plating, have the drip rail plated, and then we bolted the drip rail on so we could tune the gap between the roof and the drip rail. Yeah, and I mean, that is... It's and you just even don't see that on a Camaro, all the way. Right? right? So it's either it's on, and there's a big gap, an ugly seam sealer in there, or there's, um, you know, the stock drip rail. So it's things like that that just went every part on this car, every faster on this car has been modified, tweaked, plated, polished, um, painted, buffed, whatever you can, whatever you can think of has yeah. been done on this. And car. pretty much everything's also an ARP, right. which I mean, we had the car was in the ARP booth at SEMA. They worked with us throughout the entire build. And every single bolt is ball milled and polished. So 12 point stainless ARP yeah. fastener all the way through. If we if they didn't have something for us off the shelf at ARP, one of the cool things, ARP being a racer's company, you know, they get it. If, if they don't have something, they custom made a fastener for us. And that right. went throughout the build, they were custom building yeah. fasteners. And I even remember when I, I may have worked at Detroit Speed for three weeks and Chris Porter comes up to me one day and he says, hey, this is the engine to Stuart Adams' car. Take all the bolts out of it, measure all of them. We right. need ARPs for everything. So right. I spent at least a day and a half just measuring bolts on the engine right. so everything could be ARP under the hood as well. Accessory drive to everything. Yeah, everything. The, whole, so the whole deal. Something he, else I wanted to point out was the, the back glass and the, and the windshield, of course, are flush mounted. But again, typically on a Camaro, you'll see the several pieces of stainless trim that make, make up the trim piece. And right. rather than just not have trim on it, we wanted this car to look fairly stock, but again, every part be modified. So the guys made a one, you know, a one piece aluminum frame that we fabricated, shaped, and then we actually, for the back glass and the windshield, and actually took the car to advanced plating. Mm -hmm. And we, we kept coppering and filing and coppering and building the, the, through the plating process to fit the gaps after it was painted and then we put the bright chrome on it and all this was done right before we debuted it at Detroit. So yeah. A lot of people involved and advanced plating was a big of course part of the, all the chrome on this car. Yeah and just the fact that they were able to say hey just go ahead and, and bring the car to the facility that way we can make sure it's perfect so just you know even just transporting the car I mean they're not too far away about six hours but loading the car up transporting it just so we can get the front and rear window trim Right. Uh, played it over there. I mean, that's it's dedication to the build, and they've always been great partners with us. So, well, and, and with that said, again, it was uh, open their facility, and, and that was all on Valentine's Day too. So Valentine's Day and night through the night, it was done. So uh, big thanks to those guys and Dustin from the shop for pulling that off too. Mm -hmm. Something pretty cool too. I like it's um, there's a fisheye lens, you know, on the back. So the car is crazy. You operate all of it through the touch screen on the head unit of the stereo. It has its own IP address, so just you can operate the car off your phone if you wanted to. But it has a push button start, so you can override that. But just crazy amount of not only technology in the car, but it's blended with what a stock '69 Camaro could have looked like with some cleaned up lines. Um, the fuel fill, again, just to have some performance flavor, it kind of looks like a dry brake like you would have on a race car, mm -hmm. um, but you push it and it's spring loaded and then you can unscrew it and pull, you know, pull the cap out, uh, fill it up and then push it back and it looks like a dry brake, which I always thought was kind of cool. Yeah, that is neat. But you know, you, you never assume that anything on this car is stock. The tail panel, 
uh, has been modified. The bumpers and the tail panel, I mean, absolutely everything, including the rear spoiler. It, it's a three-piece spoiler rather than a one-piece like the Camaro's had. And it's a little lower profile and a little more angular, uh, tilted back, and just a more modern look. But it, it kind of gives homage to the, to the 69 stock 69 Camaro, but it's made out of steel. So, and even just this paint, I mean, every time I get close to the car to, to show them something, I mean, it's a mirror finish. You know, Michael and Austin, our body shop, are the best I, I consider. Put them up against anybody. We always use PPG, um, so it's it's the normal recipe that we use, but it's it's flawless. You know, yeah. I mean, the guys spent a lot of time. It spent a lot of time in between coats um, to be able to get what we needed. Eminem, our friends at Eminem Hot Rod Interiors, did the interior. There was a lot of thought and a lot of design work in the interior. Um, again, to be sophisticated, kind of be a European flavor to it, kind of like an AMG upper Mercedes look to the interior, but right. 69 Camaro on the outside. And there's even some Porsche parts in it. I, I joke that there's like eight different manufacturers worth of either parts or ideas in this car from Porsche mm -hmm. to Pontiac to, to Oldsmobile, Chevrolet, a little bit of everything. And those gauges, so those are the Porsche gauges, right? Porsche gauge style that Classic Instruments did for us uh, right in their ICU, their custom shop. Um, the guys designed a steering wheel that we cut from actually billet aluminum and then M&M wrapped. Um, the Porsche type Cayenne grab handles on the console that we custom built. Um, so uh, Recaro seats that we took apart, M&M recovered to our, our design and the way we wanted the stitching. And um, the, the roll cage is actually tucked up inside. Yeah, I mean, if you look, and, if you just look at the car from the side, the only thing that's a giveaway is that B pillar bar. Right. I mean, everything else is, it's tucked up there really good. And when the window is up, you know, it, it really hides that bar. Yeah. So the windows are closed up, you're going down the road, it doesn't even look like there's a cage in the car. I mean, you can even see where it meets the dash. It's it's body worked and painted, so everything is just tied together and packaged so well. Something that's kind of neat too that just fits is it's a 69 Pontiac um, Firebird cow panel rather than a Camaro cow panel. I just thought it had a neat look, something a little different. So then we had to make the hood. A 69 Camaro hood usually has a dip here to meet the Chevrolet cow panel. Mm -hmm. Being a Pontiac cow panel, it doesn't have that. So we reshaped the hood, lowered the profile, and extended the back of the cow hood a little bit too. So just millions of little tweaks like that on every single right. part of the car. And even to make that that hood work, I know the hinge system on this is pretty incredible too with the, the false firewall. It, it really is. That's under the hood and of course underneath the car there's years worth of work and ideas but um, actually the car has almost a false firewall in it. We, we took the hood hinge uh, ideas from a Mercedes um, and we built some hood structure back into the cowl area which then had to have drain mechanisms, a, a drain system to be able to drain out um, so it's not all in the engine compartment so that the gas strut rod you know the, the holds the hood up rather than a spring that you would see in the engine compartment it's actually back into the cowl area so there's some structure built in the firewall to be able to hold that yeah i mean you can't even can't even see it so a lot of neat work i think underneath the car and in the engine compartment that i wish everybody could see but it's uh only when it's been on display at detroit or maybe somebody's been around the shop to be able to see that the engine we want it to be again pure 69 camaro look so we've spent a lot of time on this Kurt Urban built engine um, to, to get it to look stock. Maybe how GM would have done a new 69 Camaro today, powertrain and looks, but um, the whole block, the heads, everything have been polished, ground and polished, and then base coat, clear coat, polished and buff. Um, we even did the valve covers, so it would look like a, a stock small block valve cover with the old Tonawanda decal on it, but with a twist that Alex, you helped us yep. uh, pull that off and Classic Instruments did for us. So again, this is a culmination of a lot of our partners and friends in the industry, um, even beyond the guys in the shop to pull all this together. Right, and even well, it looks like it's a decal, like you said, Classic Instruments, I sent them the file and they actually printed that on a very, very thin piece of aluminum. So. That's actually a piece of aluminum that's laid over with clear, and then that strip in the middle, it's magnetic, so you can pull that off and get the bolts to the valve cover. So, right. just the the little little details. It's the thing with this car that I tell people you need to almost have someone who's been around the car talk to you about it and explain the details because otherwise you just you wouldn't pick up on stuff like that. You're gonna miss a lot of it. You know, the the name came from uh, Tux, right? It's kind of like a tuxedo. It's it's simple, it's eloquent, and at the same time sophisticated, and, and it's, uh, it's it's what Detroit Speed stands for from a quality, the detail, and the performance all packed into one car, and 
like I said, I, I tell the guys and, the, and everybody, the crew in the shop all the time in the office that, you know, last year we couldn't have wrote a better script for what this car did for the company, for Stewart allowing us to build this car and, and all of our partners that were involved in it too. Right. So, so a yeah. special car and it always will be. Definitely. Well, I know there's one more car here, uh, Robert Taylor's Yanko clone. So let's go ahead and walk over there. Sounds good. And look what's parked in front of Tuck. She I know. About Something that, you know, again, the, the cars that I love Camaros for, the Trans Am Camaro, the Penske Donahue cars, and Big Red. So how cool yeah. is it to have Big Red and Tux and us parked together? So it's really yeah, that cool was, they brought that out. That was the first thing I noticed when they told us where our spot was. They said, oh, just pull around over there. And I saw the empty spot, and it was behind Big Red. So iconic 69 Camaro, yes. inspiration for a lot of our builds and, yes. you know, your builds in the past. And I think it's just cool. You know, you get these two cars together. It's like two different worlds, you know, purpose-built race car, and then we have our purpose-built show car, and it's just, it's cool, it's this, neat. This car is, like you said, it's started a lot of kids' dreams and wanting a 69 Camaro with what these guys have done with this car and the rebuild of this car, all mm -hmm. the records that they've set from Pikes Peak to Bonneville to, I mean, the, the mile, flying miles, everything they've done with this car, it, it's a piece of history and cool to have it here. Yeah, I just, I can't get over the fact that we're parked behind it, <laughs> Big Red for a show. It's, it it's pretty cool. awesome. Yeah, it's really neat that good guys, you know, made the celebration of the summer of 69 and the Camaros in here. What do we think? About 140? Yeah, about 100, 143, I think. Yeah, so I mean, from stock restored cars to mildly modified cars to the whatever you can think of doing on a 69 Camaro, it's here. And a lot of these cars have been in magazines and, you know, again, it's inspiration for a lot of us to build cars from. Right. So you have Robert's car. It's right over there, so we'll cut through here. This is a neat car for us that we, uh, we did for Robert. Two years ago, we took it to SEMA, and uh, he had a, a very straightforward vision. The car was actually um, done at one point with a lot of Detroit Speed parts under it, but he, Robert just wasn't satisfied, and he wanted a Detroit Speed-built car, which meant a lot to me to hear that, that, hey, I just want a car built by Detroit Speed. And he was very clear on his vision of what he wanted um, from the, the paint scheme to the interior to the old Super Yanko uh, stripes and, and decal package. So pretty neat car for us to be able to pull together, um, you know, and it, it has our normal recipe in it from our chassis and suspension parts, the Hydroform subframe, the Quadrilink, everything in between um, right out of our catalog right. with a Mast LS7 too. So it's a, it's a proven recipe that we use and let me show you under the hood here too. Got the yeah, the coolest the coolest part about this car is what Mark did with that intake. Oh yeah, it's perfect to fit the vision of the car, so it looks like the old, uh, you know, the you pull the cold air from the cowl, and Mark did an awesome job pull, pulling that together. Yeah, I love it. He uses the Holly controller like we always do on the engine management, um, you know, from the, the mast engine and the Holly controller, and. Um, it's just tried and true. It works for us every time, and it's it's just easy for us to put a car together like this and hand the keys to a customer and yep. tell them to go have fun. And the wheels, too. The wheel choice on this car, these are the Forge Line, uh, the Heritage Series, the CR3s. They just, they fit. It's perfect. Yeah, it's really, it's perfect for this style and vintage and theme of a car, and I'm glad Forge Line had that, and they're always right on top of it. And, What's cool about Forge Line is, you know, they're, they're racers, they get it, they're a very functional wheel, but, you know, they, they have an eye for what the industry needs on mm -hmm. the current build technology, current build styles, and um, they always pull it off. Yeah, and I was even over, I was at their booth yesterday talking to Sherry, and I told her every time I think they make a cool wheel and I fall in love with something new, they make something new the next year, and then I change my mind, like, oh no, if I build a car, that's the wheel I want, but they're constantly changing and innovating, and. You no, know, it's, it's nice to have their, their wheels on our cars. Uh, we trust them, again, from track days to normal street driving. They're the candy man of the industry for, you're right, they're always coming out with a new candy yep. flavor for us. So exactly. Cool. So the interior, again, pretty straightforward. Houndstooth, you, you've got you, you to love that on a vintage style theme, 69 Camaro with the orange and black houndstooth and, and the orange door panels. I mean, it was just when, when cars changed a lot and, and looked a lot different every year back in the late 60s and 70s has our dash panel on it that we make with the um, Classic Instruments Autocross series gauges that, that we have. And I think another cool thing about Classic Instruments is the custom requests. So rather than 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, 
Robert wanted to say 69 miles an hour for 69 Camaro. So, right. you know, the team over at Classic Instruments, you say, hey, I want to do this. And they just easily say, all right, no problem, we'll do it. So, I mean, they have a bunch of custom applications. So that's why we use them on, on pretty much every single build because they have that ability to pretty much make whatever we want. Right. So. No, it's something they always work with us, get what we need. And they, they do that for a lot of the, you know, the builders in the industry. It's, it's a go-to brand. Right. But, uh, you know, being a, a big block of 427, we did the satin tail panel like the big block cars had. Tucked the bumpers a little bit. We didn't do any crazy body modifications. Um, but just tucked that, tucked the bumpers, cleaned everything up in a, a very conventional trim package. And, of course, the Yinko stripe package is iconic. So um, really a fun build, very straightforward. And now Robert and his wife are out enjoying it. And I'm yeah. glad they brought it to Columbus to, to be a part of this party for the 69s. Yeah, definitely a cool car. One of my favorites at the shop. I mean, I just love how loud the interior is. So right. it's yeah. neat. And it, I think it's it's humbling and it's nice to have, you know, our builds here with, you know, among all of these cars. I mean, like you said, there's there's factory appearing cars, there's pro touring builds. And right. when it comes to pro touring builds, there's a handful here, you know, we're, we're about half of them. So I think it's, it's cool and it's nice to be here. So we definitely appreciate uh, what good guys did for this. It's really neat. You know what they did for the, every owner and the signs and the package for everybody to come in and enjoy and the, and the cool logo and the posters they did. They uh, really did a jam up job on it and bringing all the iconic cars and, and really the influential cars um, to the party here. You know, the Gould's we built low car convertible is here. Mm -hmm. Such a cool car. I've always loved that car. Uh, the Inferno is sitting here. So it, it's just hard to take it all in and, and uh, appreciate it all. But they did a great job. Awesome. So that wraps up part two. So we'll have part three coming to you soon. We're just gonna walk around and we're gonna check out some of the influential cars Kyle's been talking about and uh, some of the other cool cars here. So stay tuned, we'll have that for you.